and welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Catsbit Productions. Today is a quick tips video, quick tips for multicolor registration. I wanted to just go over some tips that you can use when you set up multicolor jobs on your manual rotary screen printing press and these tips will apply to a press that has micro registration. The first tip that I want to mention is that when you're printing your inkjet film positives and you're using the entire sheet of film like to the maximum, say printing edge to edge, you want to be careful in doing that. Okay, and the reason for that is, is that when you print, now this particular design is not, obviously not edge to edge, but if you were to stretch out a design on this piece of inkjet film positive, you know, go, coming very close to the edge, to the, to the edges, especially on the feed sides, you know, it feeds from the short side, so it'll feed into your printer from either this side or this side, right? So if you stretch a design all the way across here and you have some of it, coming very close to the edge, especially perhaps your registration marks sometimes end up way up at the edge, those can actually get a little distorted because of the way the inkjet printer works and, and sometimes the edge of the paper kind of lifts up when it's getting printed. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but sometimes when you print a piece of inkjet film positive, you can hear the print head touching the edge of the paper either when it starts or when it finishes and you can actually hear it uh, you know, almost trying to catch on the edge. So um, if you really max out your design, you want to be careful that you're not experiencing any distortion on the film positive for any reason at all. Okay, so you check and make sure your film positive is 100% and not distorted, right? Now you're going to have to check your press and you're going to go around to each head and make sure that the micro registration is zeroed out. What that means is you're going to go around to each print head Okay, every print head on the press and you're going to zero out your micro registration. You're going to make sure that each movement function is centered so that you have equal amounts of movement for your micro reg, whether it's left to right or angling back and forth on each side. You know what I'm saying? So you got to make sure that each of these three knobs are centered out on all of the heads, every head on your press. Okay, so the next thing you got to check really quick is your off contact. You don't want your off contact to be too high. So the off contact is the distance between the screen and the palette. And it should be idealistically about an eighth of an inch off of the palette. And it should be completely parallel to the palette. So what you see here, which is an exaggerated off contact situation, if you have really, really high off contact, it's going to cause registration problems no matter how well you line up the screens when you try to print with it because the stencil is so high off of the uh, substrate. When you, when you distort the screen and push it down, it's going to actually distort and it can cause major registration problems. So always remember that with off contact, less is more. Okay, another thing to remember when you're setting up your multicolor print job and you're using pellons or a test shirt um, or, you know, certain types of ink. There's some, you know, what you got to remember is, is that sometimes uh, when you flash cure on press while you're setting up the job, the pellon itself can shrink, the t-shirt itself can shrink, and even sometimes certain inks when they are flash cured can contract. So when you're setting up on the press, you want to make sure that your flash cure unit is not too hot and you're just going to flash cure just to the point of where it's dry to the touch and that's it. So when you're setting up the job and you're using the flash cure to flash the uh, colors in between or say you print the black printer and you want to flash cure it so you can line up all the other colors to the black printer without getting ink on the back of the subsequent screens, you want to make sure that the heat is not too hot because if it shrinks the pellon or shrinks the shirt or shrinks the ink, you will have difficulty lining up all the subsequent screens to that particular print that you accidentally shrunk. Okay, so that leads us to another item of concern, which is when you're working with really heavy 100% cotton garments, um, sometimes they do want to shrink. Uh, so what you can do is you can pre-shrink them. 
meaning that you can run them either underneath your flash gear unit on, on the press, you can load them up on the press and rotate them around and let them all sit under the flash gear unit for a decent amount of time to let them shrink, okay? Or you can possibly run them through your belt dryer before printing, okay? And with heavy 100% with heavy cotton garments, uh, it can also help in, in taking out the humidity or the moisture out of the garment, which will help you with your final cure. But for registration purposes, we don't want heavy 100% cotton garments to shrink on us while we're printing, right? So if you're flashing in between each color and you're, you know, say you're printing a, a, a heavy 100% cotton uh, fleece sweatshirt or something like that, that can really have a shrinking potential. So if you're doing a four color and you're, you're flashing two or three times in, in, in your printing, that can give you a lot of chances for, for garment shrinkage. So that's another thing that you have to be concerned with, with multicolor registration. Okay, the next tip can be a little tricky and it may be something that you'll look at when you're more experienced, but it is something to consider which way you flood and stroke. Okay, because when you do a pull stroke as opposed to a push stroke, there's a different amount of stencil drag. Now, as you know, in many of my videos, I like to pull flood and push stroke. Okay, so I know that's the way I want to print my job. Okay, so when I set up the job, a multicolor print job on press, and I know that I'm going to push stroke, I know there's going to be a decent amount of stencil drag when I do that. So. What I do is, uh, say for instance, the black printer, I have the registration mark you know, horizontally across, across the palette, and say I printed the black printer on a t-shirt, okay? I know that there's a certain amount of stencil drag that pushed the, the whole design and the stencil towards the, the print head, okay? So, what I do is, is after I print the black printer, and I have the registration marks on my, on my test shirt, I will line up the next color, okay, if this is the horizontal registration marks, I actually line it up right above the, the black printer where I, I printed the first registration mark, all right? Does that make sense? So you see what I'm saying? I print the black printer on, on the press and I have the t-shirt, a test shirt, and so I've got this line, right? This, this is my horizontal crosshair that is going horizontal and it's parallel to the print head, right? So when it's like this, then the next screen that I put down, I'm actually going to put the horizontal mark, set it right above the other horizontal mark of the previous, the, the black printer, which I printed to line up all my other screens to, right? And if it's a four color or five color, I'm going to do that for each subsequent screen. I'm going to line them all up so that, so that the, the horizontal uh, crosshair right, a registration mark that's parallel to the print head, each one is going to be, they're going to be touching that line, but just right above it, you follow? So that when I, when I push stroke, the stencil drag is already compensated for, and it basically, the stencil will push down and push into the right position, all right? And that's something that may take you a little experience to get used to and kind of know what I'm talking about there. Okay, so that leads us to another tip, is that you actually have to, you know, when, you, when you're setting up and you're considering stencil drag and stuff like this, you have to consider the inks that you're using. That's right, because the thicker the ink is, the more stencil drag it can cause. Okay, so if you have really, really, really thick inks, you're going to already know that, that that's going to cause more stencil drag than if you're using a lot thinner inks. Okay, so depending on what the job is and what you're printing, you might be able to thin them down a little bit or at the very least mix them very well before you put them on screen so that, that they have worked out and gotten creamy and smooth, okay? Because when you first start out, the inks can be thick, okay? So that's going to cause excessive stencil drag when you're printing and then it's going to cause registration problems. Especially for those of you who might be in colder regions where the weather in your shop may, you know, is affected. It's affected by the weather, the weather in your shop. <laughs> You've got weather in your shop. So you have to consider that. Like during the winter, if it's colder in your shop, you're going to want to warm up your ink a little bit to room temperature before you start working with it. Because if it's really cold and really thick and really stiff, it's going to cause major stencil drag. And 
whether you pull stroke or put uh, push stroke or whatever whatever flood and stroke method you use the ink is going to be really thick and cause a lot of stencil drag which can result in registration problems okay there's another uh, two more quick things that you want to consider to uh, make sure that you don't have any registration problems on your multicolor print jobs and the first of those last two things are your palettes and your print arms so you might think that this is even silly to mention but you must make sure that the palette and the print arm is parallel to the screen when it's mounted in the print head if the palette is not parallel to the screen on the palette arm and the palette arm is not even parallel to the screen then you're going to have some serious registration issues okay so the last tip for this quick tips video which has kind of maybe gotten a little bit long but you know more information is better right so the last tip is is that make sure that you don't overexpose your stencil when you're working with multicolor designs you can actually choke the design and what that means is that if you do a long exposure what can happen during a long exposure or an extended exposure time is the light actually starts to come around the film positive in other words if there's a if there's a piece of black line art on the film positive if you use a really long exposure time the light actually will start to creep around the sides of that line art and choke the design so when you're exposing screens you want to make sure that each screen has the same exposure time and you're not causing any uh, distortions or choking or anything like that just purely from the exposure itself okay and that probably wouldn't be a major issue until you started to do really critical registration type work like maybe half tones four color process or really really fine line art that requires uh, some some really tight registration then you're going to want to make sure that your exposures on your exposure unit and with your film positives is, is pretty much 100 percent dead on all right so there you have it my quick tips for working with multicolor jobs on press and dealing with registration setting up the registration and registration issues these tips can all be used for any multicolor job, whether it's a two color, a three color, a four color, whether it's four color process or what have you. All of these tips can be used in setting up and troubleshooting registration problems. Okay, so, you know, if you're having problems setting up, you can use these tips. If you have problems after you set up, you can use these tips and look at uh, some of the situations and scenarios that I described and try to correct the registration problem okay so that's it for today guys thanks a lot for your time and attention um, please remember to visit the Catspit Productions website at catspitproductionsllc.com there is a plethora of information about screen printing there for you available free 24 hours 7 days a week so please take advantage of it okay and again thanks for watching thanks for your time and attention and we'll see you next time hello and welcome to another hello and welcome to another educational videos about videos